I generated these images of myself using a tool that's easy and cheap. I didn't have to use Google Colab and Dream Booth and GitHub and somehow figure out how to make all that stuff talk to each other. Instead, I found Imagine Me. Here's how it works. Create an account, and once you do that, you'll need to get some credits. You need 10 credits to train a model. And you can get 10 credits for 5 bucks, that makes them 50 cents a piece, but then once you train your model, you won't be able to generate any images with it. So you can go for 25 credits for 10 bucks, that makes it 40 cents a credit. I did the 45 credits for 15 bucks, 33 cents a credit. Now, it takes 10 credits to train your model. Those go away. That leaves you with 35 credits. And it takes one credit to generate four images. So 33 cents a credit and you get four images per credit. You do the math, but it's pretty reasonable. You'll see I've got a couple of models in here and we'll do create your own model. But first, let's browse down through and show you what some other people have created. Anything that you see in here, fortunately, you can hover over this thing and see what prompt they used. And if you want to use this prompt yourself, you just click to copy and it will drop that in your prompt box. The dot 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 represents where your model name is going to go. So you just click one of these model names and it pops it in there. I love that that's super easy like that. If you want to see more inspiration, you can refresh this and it will change up the previews that it's showing you. And you can also filter that. I think you get the idea of what's going on. And all these images are generated by people that have trained their model and these are their faces that they're using to generate these. So let me show you how to train a model. Click the create your own model button, choose a subject to train. Do you want a dog, a cat, a male or a female? Yes, you can do your dog or cat in here if you want. Click continue, choose a model type and they give you three types to choose from here. Art, photography or 3D cartoon. The art is sort of the all-purpose model, and that's the one that I've used for all my generations. It's less specialized and can be used for any style. If you do the photography model, it says it's great for professional looking pictures, photographs, but it'll have a more difficult time doing some of the abstract stuff if you want to get cartoony and whatnot. And then the 3D cartoon works for cartoony stuff, but it's probably not going to work so well for photography. So if you know there's one of these styles, either photography or 3D cartoon, that you're always going to want to use, then heck, go with one of those. Now you need some images. It says for best results, you want to upload 12 close-up images and 8 upper body images. I can tell you that my training images, while I did upload 20, and mine were somewhere between the close-up and the upper body. I didn't have any, I don't, well, I don't think I had any that showed this much of my torso. And here's some advice on which images you're going to upload. The biggest problem I had was just finding 20 pictures of myself because prior to doing this YouTube thing, I'm not in a lot of pictures. You don't want things that are all darkened out or the phone's covering the face or you're turned completely sideways where you can't see the face or really blurry. That's a bad idea. Decent quality, clear visible face. And you don't want to use photos that have pets or other people in them. If the AI robots see another face in the image, they might get confused. And they do say, as most of these things do, use different backgrounds, different clothing. So here you can't just go shoot in the same clothes with the same background, 20 pictures and call it a day. I mean, I guess you could. I don't know what the results would be, but they recommend different backgrounds, different clothing and different angles and facial expressions. I don't know what's wrong, what this guy's doing here, but you don't want to do, you know, 20 images of duck lips. Do some different things, some different angles of the face and some smiles, frowns, whatever. They do recommend that you have the uh, faces upside right instead of uploading them upside down and sideways for obvious reasons. Now you just select your images. You can drag and drop or import them from there. This is what the training images look like that I uploaded for my model. Some of these are from YouTube videos and some of them are just shots that I took when I'm trying to create these headshot selfie looking images. And the reason that I want these and the reason that I want to be able to use something like Imagine Me and generate images of myself is so that I have something to use for thumbnails and other things like that. The last thing I want to do when I'm trying to do everything else to put together a video is have to go find the right spot, have on the right clothing and the right lighting to take a picture to add to my thumbnail. So I'm trying to make that process a little smoother and give me some more variety. And I don't know if you noticed, but my images were not all the same dimensions. I did not have them all at 512 by 512 or 768 by 768 which is what I know you have to do with a lot of the stable diffusion model things. I don't know how Imagine Me gets around that, but they don't tell you to keep them all the same, and I didn't keep them all the same. 
So I can drag my images in there. And it looks like I only had 15. That's odd. I wonder where my other five went. That's all right. I'll just grab five more, drop them in there. And now we have 20. We'll hit continue. Now it wants to give it a name. And this is the name that you're going to use in every prompt that you generate images from. I'll call this one Bob Tris and hit continue. It's telling us that it'll use 10 more credits. That's fine. You guys are worth it to make this demonstration. All right, our upload is successful and it tells us here your model will be ready within five hours and it'll be here on the generation page. Now it says five hours here. You get an email that says this might take a day, but what I found is usually in a couple hours, it's ready to go. I've got the email and I come in and I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. You can also check the status here on the generate page. Here it shows this one is training. Now, once you have your model in order to generate, you're right here on this generate page. Pick an image that you like. This one is bizarre, but we'll use it anyway. We can just click to copy. It drops it in and it has selected Bob V2, which is this model right here. You hit imagine. When you start a new session or you're using a new model in a session, it has to load it in and that can take a minute or two. That's what it's doing right now. So if I keep using this same model and generate from here, like right now in this sitting, it won't have to do this every time. But if I switch over and say, okay, I want to start using this model here for a generation, then it'll take it that minute or two to load it in. Or if I completely close out and go away and come back in and want to keep using the same model I was using, the session ended, so I have to do this again. You don't have to do anything. It just takes a minute or two for this thing to do its thing. While this model's loading in, it's probably a good time to tell you that sometimes there is a hiccup when you're generating images and you'll get a, a, a little error message that says, hey, I couldn't do this. Uh, something went wrong. Your credits have been refunded. And I have to say, first of all, that doesn't happen very often. It happened to me the first day I used this, and I don't think it's happened to me since. But that first day, I had several issues with it generating, and they were honest. Every time it failed to generate, it gave me back my credit. Not only that, a lot of times I found that it actually completed the generation and still gave me back the credit. At one point, I ended up with more credits than what I started with. So there's no ripoff going on. Kudos to them. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this model loading process so that we can get on with things. And now we're generating. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, looky there. Something went wrong and my credits have been returned. All right, let's go find another one to generate. We'll do that one. Since I've already used this model in this session, it doesn't have to do that loading the model thing. It just goes straight into creating the images. And there I am in the 80s. I think it does a really good job. I didn't show you everything it generated in the beginning of this video. So let's go look and see here in the gallery. These are the ones we just created. There are the two that it created and couldn't get the other two, so it gave me my credit back. Love that. And then here are others. There are some, this newscaster thing, it did not do well with this. Not real happy about how the comic book thing turned out, but that's okay. I'm sorry for making you look at my ugly face through all this, but just remember you're not looking for the beauty of this face because it's not there. Just looking at kind of the match of how it took a bunch of pictures of this and came out with what it came out with. Some of these really just kind of stunned me because it made me feel like I was, you know, like that's me. I should have been there. And then some of them are just way off. I Like I got a five head here. You could land an aircraft on that thing. I don't know what it was doing. There I am as a cyborg. We've got some RGB coming into the picture. Check out all those tattoos with words that don't make sense. And most of these I copied prompts from the gallery just to see what it would do. This one I loved. Somebody did a, um, taking a selfie with a bear looking at the camera. That, that was pretty good. That's not me at all, but in the same generation, it came up with these as well. And I think what happened is that instead of using the style of this artist, it tried to make an image of this artist merged with an image of me. I have noticed it doesn't do so great on hands. These aren't terrible, but when you get down here, some of these like this one here, that is completely unnatural. And this one, I don't know what's going on. Some of them, I do have six fingers. Uh, it did not do well with these football pictures at all. Those look 
nothing like me. And I tried to put myself in the Oval Office. That was an original prompt that I came up with. And I don't know who it's merging my face and eyes with, but uh, yeah, it didn't, didn't come out like me at all. Here we are, another one outside with tattoos. There were a lot of those things in the gallery. These, some funny facial expressions, but not a great likeness. Uh, the spot here between my nose and my mouth just got elongated a lot. This one I thought, and, and I did take this from an existing prompt, and this was a GTA loading screen style. I thought that was kind of an interesting concept. And this color one here, I think came out pretty good. Got some long hair going on. There I am in an Irish pub. Here my mind is blown. Not great on the likeness, but you know, tried some 8-bit pixel art. And there you have me calmly standing in front of things that are exploding. That would be me. So the gallery is your images that you've created, but you can also go to the showcase, which is everybody's images. This is like what's down below the prompt box where you can find prompts that you want to use or get inspiration for prompts. Any of these, if you click on them, you'll get the prompt that they put in. And remember the three dots is where your model name goes in. They say to put important things, things that you want to take priority, use parentheses for that. And you can even use double parentheses and triple parentheses. I imagine you don't want to go too hard on that or it'll end up you'll be telling it everything's a priority. They do also recommend, especially when it comes to uh, photography, that you can describe the camera lens, the type of camera, how it was developed, all those details. And if you're like me, I don't really know all that stuff. So I look for these prompts to tell me. I look for the lighting that I like and find one that in the prompt, it'll tell me what that lighting was, what made it happen. Kodak, long exposure, blah, blah, blah. So if you want that style, there's probably some words in here that made that style happen. If you're not thrilled with what your model has created, you can fine tune your model. And I did this with my first one. I made this model and then it had the option down here to click that and retrain the model. And I did, and it created this model. And now this is the one that I like the best and I tend to use. I haven't done that to this one so that I could show you how it works. So we just click this little deal here. It comes up, refine your model. And what it wants you to do is look at these pictures and you're at step 2000. It wants you to scan back through and find the spot that's the best representation of the model. So in this case, me, I look through these and say, which one looks the most like me? And I've found that there's not a point anywhere where they all look exactly like me or, you know, where they all look a lot like me. And I think what this is doing is finding out like if maybe the 2000 steps, maybe that was too much for the model. Maybe it trained so much that it got off track. So you find a spot, if there's a spot here that's better, you know, say if you come back 1900, 1800, my last one, 1500 was the happy space. For this one, I'm going to say 1900. I always have a hard time deciding on these things, especially because this guy on the bus doesn't look like me at all in any of them. Neither does this one or the Lego character. These two kind of do. So those are what I'm looking at. Although this guy with the glowing red eyes creeps me the out. There's no charge for this. It doesn't cost you any more to do this. So you hit retrain and then it's going to start retraining this model. And you'll be able to see the difference in your models up here. Like this is the original, the first one that I did, version one, the original. And it shows you that it's the base model over here. This is the base model, but it's step 1500. So this is showing us that, you know, obviously the base, the main model is going to be 2000 steps. Anything different is going to be sort of a retraining of that main model, but it doesn't get rid of your main model either. You can still use that one. And so I've fiddled around with that just to see what kind of results I get. Hey, I hope you found this helpful. Go play with Imagine Me. I'll leave a link in the description and hope to see you in the next video.